Greetings again today in that name that's above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church. It's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during this hour coming up, we can be an inspiration to you in the singing as well as the preaching of God's Word. And you in the radio listen audience, if you get on your phone and call a shut-in, have them to tune in and get this hour. I believe we can be a blessing to them, be doing them a favor and us as well. So we appreciate your presence here. We appreciate you listening in the radio listen audience. We received a call in that we have special prayer for Brother Claude Huff out in the... Uh, Calvary Baptist Church community, seriously ill, and a good friend called in and asked us to remember him in prayer, so breathe up a prayer for him. If you have your Bible, turn with you please to John chapter 10 for the reading of God's Word today. I want to speak to you today on this line of thought, things the Lord Jesus never did. Now there's some things that he never did that proves his deity as well as many things that he did. Now you turn to John chapter 10 for the reading of God's Word. It's page 1129 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Now to you out in the radio listening audience, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you're tuning in each day at 12 o'clock noon, you get the daily broadcast, Monday through Saturday through WNGC, the big giant station here in Athens, Georgia. This is a faith ministry. I depend upon you to love God, to work with me in getting out the gospel. God gave the word, great is the company of those that publish it. On yesterday, Brother Hobbs and I were visiting, uh, visiting the home of a dear lady, elderly lady. And uh, I told her, I said, this is Preacher Edwards. She said, Preacher Edwards, I listen to you every Sunday. And said, I'm, I'm shut in, I can't go to church because of illness in the home. And I listen to you every Sunday. And said, now since I've seen you, I'll be more interested in the program. So you never know. Who's listening to the Sunday morning broadcast or the daily broadcast? And it's a great home mission work, and God has used it. I say that humbly and give Him the glory. And it's a blessing to a lot of dear elderly people, a lot of shut ins that can't get out and go to church like others. Now, we do have our cassette tape. We record the Sunday morning program, both the singing and the message. They're on cassette tape, they're available for $3 each. And the money is used to help pay for radio time. If you'd like to have these cassette tape, if you listen, I can give them to you by title and number. Today's tape would be tape number 125. 125. 125 is the number of the tape today. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. This is a faith ministry. Sometimes it's difficult to maintain the program on there by faith, but... God has spoken to the hearts of his children to help us out, and we've managed to keep the program on there now going into our 36th year of daily broadcasting from the classic city of Athens, Georgia. So having broadcasted data now for almost 36 years, you know this is no fly-by-night ministry, and it's worthy of your prayers, it's worthy of your support. In John chapter 10, verse 22, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast, the dedication, and it was with her. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man, maketh thyself God. Jesus answered them, 
Is it not written in your law? I said, you're gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent unto the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe me not, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought him again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. And I went away again beyond Jordan in the place where John had first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. That's reading from John chapter 10, verses 22 through the remainder of the chapter. And speaking to you on this line of thought, things the Lord Jesus never did. Now there's at least four ways that dear to my Lord Jesus Christ established. Number one, by the scriptures. Number two, by what he was. Number three, by what he did. Number four, by what he did not do. So I'm dealing with number four today on some things that Jesus did not do that proves without a shadow of a doubt his dear to that he was very God. I read a little article in the black and white publication from the University of Georgia last week. There's some blasphemer, some spiritual ignoramus up around wine. They wrote an article trying to tone down the deity of Jesus Christ or tone down the infallibility of the Bible. Ignorance writing, of course, spiritually ignorant. And the Bible said people like that are brute beasts waiting for judgment and condemnation of God and hell fire. It's pitiful when somebody like the, the stupid person from Winder that wrote that article and then those that put it in the paper should not have put that in that publication for our students to read and others to read because it's blasphemy of the worst kind trying to destroy the Bible, trying to destroy the deity of the Son of God. People like that are twofold, the child of hell and hated for destruction, brute beast born to be destroyed and buried in hell forever. Now that's strong language, but it's true whether you like it or not. Today we're going to talk about some things that Jesus never did. Number one, Jesus never sought advice. Nowhere in the Bible can you find where Jesus Christ ever sought advice from anyone. He didn't have to seek advice because he was very God. Now you can't say that about Abraham. Abraham sought advice more times than one. You can't say that about Moses. Moses sought advice many times and he was a great man, a man of great wisdom and learning. There he was reared in Egypt and had access to the greatest institutions of learning in Egypt. He was trained in the military uh, field and nevertheless he sought advice many times. You can't say that about Solomon. Solomon was the wisest man, worldly speaking, on the face of the earth apart from the Son of God. A great man of wisdom. God gave him, gave him that wisdom. But Solomon also sought advice. Jesus Christ never sought advice from anyone, any time, or any place. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24, But of them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. So Jesus had no need of seeking advice. The second thing Jesus never did, Jesus never changed his mind. Nowhere in the Bible can you find where Jesus ever changed his mind. Jesus knew what he wanted. He said what he meant, he meant what he said, he did what he set out to do, and not one time did he ever change his mind in the Bible. He was very God. There was no need for him to change his mind because what he said, he meant it, he knew what he was saying because he was very God. Jesus was perfect in body, mind, and speech. No doubt about that. The third thing the Lord Jesus never did, Jesus was never in a hurry. Nowhere in the Bible can you find where the Son of God was ever in a hurry about anything. Now you do find God in a type in a hurry. When a poor sinner was coming home, you find in Luke chapter 15 when the prodigal son came home and there the father ran to meet him and that father there is only a type of God the Father and he was in a hurry. And you can only find God in, the, in a hurry at one time, only in a type. And that was when a sinner was coming home to be reconciled to his father. You find that in Luke chapter 15. But nowhere in the Bible can you find why Jesus Christ ever got in a hurry. 
He was not in a hurry when he rose from the dead. He lay in the grave three days and three nights, and then he took the the uh, wrapping around him, the robe they had around him, the gauze they had around him, and a, a napkin about his face, the linen cloth. Jesus took his own good time when he came out of the grave and placed those things in order. He took the napping out around his face, placed that in order, and then he came up from that grave. He took his own good time according to the way they found the clothing in the grave when they went to visit the grave on the morning after his resurrection. And so he never got in a hurry when he rose from the dead. Jesus was never in a hurry when he made the world. The Son of God made the world and he took his time. And uh, six days he made the world. He, he was never in a hurry. God rested on the seventh day. Took his own good time. God could just spoken the world into existence and everything in it if he mind to because he was very God. But he just took his time and six days. He set everything in order and created what we have up on the earth at the beginning. He was not in a hurry when he chose his twelve. Jesus Christ was on the earth almost 30, around 30 years before he ever chose his 12 apostles. He took his own good time. He spent a night in prayer before he chose Judas among the 12. And there he took his own good time. And he chose 12 men. Men that were fishermen, uh, tax collectors, men of various walks of life. He chose to be his apostles. And he took his own good time when he chose the 12. Not only that, but he took his own good time when he heard his good friend Lazarus was sick. They sent him word that Lazarus was a sick man. You find that in John chapter 11. And Jesus took his own good time to go to Bethany to visit Martha and Mary when Lazarus was sick. And after he had been in the grave four days, Jesus finally appeared on the scene. He did not get in a hurry. He knew Lazarus was sick. He knew Lazarus had died. Took his own good time. Four days later, he came on the scene there and raised Lazarus from the dead. See, the Son of God never got in a hurry. Down here we have men that get in a hurry, run over each other, kill each other. The Bible says in the book of Daniel 12, In the end time, many shall run to and fro, knowledge shall increase. We're living in a wild world today. People running in every direction. People living by the minute, by the second. Have to be on the job by the second, by the minute. And running over one another, hardly able to speak to each other. They pass each other so swiftly. We're living in a fast age and majority of the world going down a broad, slick road toward hell. And many shall go in thereat. But Jesus never got in a hurry. Took his own good time. Number four, Jesus never showed personal fear. Not one time in the Bible do you find where Jesus ever showed any personal fear whatsoever. While he was in the wilderness on the mountain of temptation, when the devil tempted him after there, he fasted 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry and thirsty. And the devil came on the scene and offered him the world if he'd bow down and worship him. And Jesus showed no personal fear whatsoever. He was just as calm as could be. He faced the devil when the devil challenged him. He said, um, it is written, it is written, it is written. He put the word of God on Satan and Satan had to flee. He showed no fear whatsoever. He showed no fear when he cleansed the temple. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found the money exchanges there. Uh, making a profit off of the people that came in to buy the doves and so forth for sacrifices. People had to go for many miles. They had to have a sacrifice when they came to the temple. They had the doves and the lambs there. People did. They brought them in. And they would charge people very high prices for those animals and those fowls that they might use them for sacrifice. And the poor people, not able to bring their own sacrifice for many, many miles, were forced to buy one and they had to pay a tremendous price for it. Jesus didn't like that. He went to the temple and there he made him a whip out of a strong cord. And there he drove out the animals. He kicked over the tables. He took the doves and gave them to the people and said, take these away. Now the reason he gave the doves to the people, he did not want them to fly away. The animals they could still keep. The money they could pick up off the floor. But if the doves, if he let them out of the cage, they could fly away. And they'd say, well, he come destroying personal property. So he says, take these doves and carry them out. And that they did. And there he drove out the money changes in the temple. He showed no sign of fear whatsoever. 
He covered all the ground he stood on. He was very God and very man. And he had no need to show any fear in the temple. Not only that, he showed no personal fear when Jesus, or when Judas rather, led the mob after him. He was at the Garden of Gethsemane, and he sees a mob coming. It's nighttime. They have their lanterns, their torches, their swords, and here comes a mob. Judas Iscariot is leading that mob, and Judas Iscariot said, Now the man I kiss, he's the one, take him. And so they came to crucify Jesus. Judas Iscariot came on the scene, reached out his arms, put his arms around Jesus, and kissed him, and said, Hell, Master. But Jesus showed no sign of fear, not, not a bit in the world. Simon Peter took his sword and cut a man's ear off, and Jesus put it back on his head and said, Simon, put up your sword. No time to be fighting like this. He showed no fear whatsoever when that howling mob came and took him at the Garden of Gethsemane to carry him over to the hall to be tried. He showed no fear when he stood before the rulers. They carried the Son of God before the high priests and the elders and the rulers and even the governor and the king, and he showed no fear whatsoever. Jesus stood there as solemn as a judge, no sign of fear as he stood before those rulers because he was very God. Jesus showed no fear while he died on the cross. The Son of God hanged there on the cross, and he said to John, Behold thy mother. He was concerned about the woman that brought him into the world. He showed no fear whatsoever. He hanged there. He died on the cross. He was very God and very man. He died like a man. He was God that died for the sins of the world. He showed no fear while dying on the cross. That proves the very deity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those other men, they nailed to the cross. They were screaming, no doubt, and cursing. And, and they had to hold them and nail them, hold their hands to the cross to nail them, hold their feet to the cross to nail them down. They were trying to get up. They were screaming, begging, pleading, but not the Son of God. When they nailed Jesus Christ to the cross, no doubt he stretched out his own hands. No doubt he placed his own feet in position. And there they nailed him to a cross. He showed no sign of personal fear whatsoever. Number five, Jesus never made a mistake. You can't find anywhere in the Word of God where Jesus ever made a mistake. Abraham made a mistake. We found on one occasion where Abraham camped in the wrong place. And when a drought came, instead of trusting God, he ran down into Egypt, got into trouble, and lied about his wife Sarah. He said that uh, Sarah was his sister. He told a half-truth. Sarah was his half-sister, but she was his wife. He didn't tell that she was his wife, got himself into trouble. And later he come back, and he made a mistake when he married Hagar because Sarah requested that he do so. Abraham, a great man, a founder of the Hebrew nation, made terrible mistakes in his lifetime. Jesus never made a mistake. Moses made a mistake. On one occasion he went out, he saw an Egyptian and a Hebrew fighting, and he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Thought he had him covered up. Evidently he left a toe sticking out or a thumb or ear or something because somebody spotted that uh, Egyptian in the sand. Moses made that mistake, lost his temper. It cost him 40 years on the backside of the desert for doing so. Later on, when God said, Moses, I want you to speak to the rock, he smote the rock the second time. And there God said, Moses, because you disobeyed me, You'll not go into the promised land. You go up on Mount Pisgah, I'll let you look across Jordan and see the promised land, but you can never go in. You gotta die. You disobeyed me. Moses made a mistake. He made many mistakes, Moses did. And he was the lawgiver, one of the greatest men ever walked in shoe leather. He was God's man, a leader of the Israelites out of the Egyptian bondage. David was a man after God's own heart. David was a king. David was the greatest king that ever lived. And David made a mistake. He took Uriah's wife, had Uriah sent the battlefront, and had him killed. David made many mistakes in his lifetime, but never did Jesus make a mistake. David, a great king, a man after God's own heart, greatest king that's ever lived, apart from Jesus Christ, made many, many mistakes. Simon Peter, the great war horse of God, that preached that great sermon on the day of Pentecost, made a mistake. He denied that he was an apostle. He went out and started cussing. At the time, he should have been praying and standing by the Savior. And he cursed and denied that he knew the Lord. Lady went out and wept bitterly. He made a mistake when he cut the man's ear off. Simon Peter made a mistake uh, when Paul rebuked him in the book of Galatians. Simon Peter made many mistakes. He's a great giant for God, a mighty apostle, but he made some mistakes. Jesus never made a mistake. The apostle Paul, a great missionary, one of the greatest that ever lived, 
one of the greatest preachers that ever existed. We have the gospel today right here in Northside Baptist Church. And that's in Georgia because of Paul's missionary tour, because he carried the gospel into Europe where our forefathers came from. Paul was a great missionary, great man of God, but he made a mistake. He went back to Jerusalem in order to appease the Jews. He took a Jewish vine, shaved his head, made a terrible mistake. That was wrong. Paul should have never done that. Paul made some mistakes in his lifetime, but not Jesus. Nowhere do you find where Jesus Christ, the Son of God, ever made a mistake. He was perfect in thought, deed, and action. He was very God. That has to prove the deity of our dear Savior. Number six, Jesus never showed surprise. Nowhere in the Bible do you find where Jesus ever showed any surprise about anything. He didn't need to. He knew what was coming to pass. Now, the disciples were amazed at times. They couldn't understand some things that happened. They showed surprise. But he was not surprised when Judas betrayed him. Jesus knew Judas Iscariot would betray him. In John chapter 6, the latter part of the chapter, Jesus said, I have chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. That was in the beginning of his ministry. He wasn't surprised when Judas did what he did. He was not surprised when Simon Peter denied him. Because he told Simon Peter, he said, the devil is going to sift you as wheat. But when you converted, you strengthened your brethren. He was not surprised when Simon Peter denied him and cursed. Jesus knew he would do that. And he was not surprised. He, was not, he knew man. He knew what was in man. So nowhere in the Bible do you find where Jesus ever anywhere in his lifetime... And he lived about 33 and a half years on the earth. No time did he ever show any surprise in the word of God. He was God. He was omniscient. And he was omnipotent. Omnipresent. He knew all of these things. And therefore he never showed surprise. Number seven. Jesus was never defeated in a controversy. Now you have others defeated in uh, controversies and debates and so forth. But never the son of God. He stood his ground. He was never defeated in a controversy. Whenever the Herodians, whenever the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the elders, and that crowd tried to trap him and get him in a controversy, he was never defeated, not one time. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, and the scribes tried their best to trap the Son of God, but they never could. He was never defeated in a controversy. And then number eight, Jesus never performed a selfish miracle. Not one time in the Bible, although he performed many miracles, did Jesus ever perform a selfish miracle? Not one time. All the miracles he performed, he performed them for others. You study the miracles of the Son of God and you find every one of them, he did it for others to help other people along the way. He never performed a selfish one for himself, not one time. Even whenever he could turn bread into stones into bread, he didn't do it. He never performed a selfish miracle. He could have done that in the wilderness when he was hungry, but he did not. All the miracles Jesus Christ performed, he did it for someone else. He was very God. Number nine, Jesus never distrusted God. Not one time did Jesus ever distrust God. In Luke chapter 23 and verse 46, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. While on the cross, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He did not distrust God the Father not one time in the Word of God. You can't say that about others. There's a lot of distrust among others, but not from the Son of God. Number 10, Jesus never denied a good and honorable request. You read the Bible, you find when people came and asked for a good honorable request, then Jesus never denied that. Not one time. He was very God. He wanted to help others. He did help others. And he never denied a good request. Number 11, Jesus never confessed to sin. Not one time in the word of God do you find where Jesus ever confessed to sin. Why? Because he never sinned. Jesus Christ was very God and very man. He was deity and deity cannot sin. So he had no need to confess sin. He never committed a sin. In John chapter 8 and verse 46, Jesus said, Which of you now can convince me of sin? That mob, as they tried to trap him, as they tried to condemn him, as they blasphemed, as they lied on him, Jesus said, which one of you can point out a sin that I've committed? Which one of you can do it? And not a one of them could. Not a one. Because Jesus never committed a sin. Simon Peter said in 2 Peter 2, 22, 
There was no guile found in his mouth. Simon should have known. He ate by his side. He slept by his side. He associated with Jesus for some three years. And Simon Peter said, there's never a guile in the mouth of the Savior. We find that Pilate said seven times, seven times when Pilate was trying to get them to turn Jesus loose, seven times Pilate said, I find no fault in him. The centurion stood at the tomb, at the grave rather, uh, at the cross rather where he was crucified, and we died on the cross. That centurion said, surely, truly, this is the Son of God. And so Jesus Christ never confessed a sin. You can't say that about mankind. You can't say that about Abraham. You can't say that about David. You can't say that about Peter, or Paul, James, or John, and the others. You can't say that about any living being on the earth. But the Bible says, of all sin, it comes short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ is the only person that ever lived without sin. Now, you've had some false prophets and false teachers in the land. This old uh, sun, moon, uh, young moon, or whatever his name is from Korea, he says he's the Messiah. He says he's equal to the Son of God. He's a liar and a devil. Oh, Joseph Smith back yonder that was killed many years ago for originating a cult. Uh, they shot him in jail, him and his brother. And he said he was greater than Jesus Christ because he said the, the, the apostles and disciples left Jesus, but his uh, disciples and apostles didn't leave him. He was a liar, a thief, a murderer, and got what he deserved. Now, beloved, listen to me. There's a lot of people that claim to be God. There's a lot of people today that say they are perfect. You have false prophets and false teachers coming on the scene and many saying, I am Christ. And Jesus plainly warns us in the Bible that the, in the end time, many shall say, I am Christ and deceive many. Beware of these false prophets. Now, Jesus never committed a sin. Then number 12, Jesus never apologized for anything that he did. Now, I wish you let that to sink in for just a moment. The Son of God ministered on the earth, remained on the earth for 33 and a half years, began his earthly ministry at the age of 30. That was the law required of a priest at that time. They had to be 30 years old. Started his public ministry and traveled around, slanted light on, and they tried to kill him. And not one time did Jesus ever apologize for anything he ever did. Now you find men today that apologize. You find people today that will compromise. You find people today, if they get in hot water, they'll compromise and apologize, but never the Son of God. Beloved, listen to me. Jesus had nothing to apologize for. He was very God. He told the truth. He preached the truth. He was a God-man. He lived upon the earth. He died to pay the sin debt. He had no reason to apologize. Now, could you understand why this... Uh, ignoramus from up here around Winder would put that article, have it put in the paper and blaspheming the Son of God and blaspheming the Word of God. That spiritual ignorance. The Bible said that person is a brute beast headed for condemnation and hell fire according to the book of Jude. That's pathetic. Blind, blind people, ignorant people spiritually should lay off the Word of God, lay off of Jesus Christ because they know nothing about God, nothing about the Bible and ought to keep their filthy mouths shut and not write articles trying to tone down the deity of Jesus and blaspheme the word of God and try to de destroy the scriptures because what they do, they're destroying themselves and God said they're brute beasts headed for destruction and that's exactly where they go. That's pathetic, that's sad, but you have people of Satan that'll do things like that to try to tear down and try to destroy Try to write articles to have young people in universities and colleges and high schools to read them to try to destroy their faith in the Bible and in God. And that's satanic to the core. And you need to realize these things. I brought some things, 12 things today that Jesus never did that proves his deity. He was very God and very man and died and paid our sin debt on Calvary, was buried and rose again. And now at the right hand of God is coming back again. If you don't know him today, Y'all get acquainted with our Savior. Thank you. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, I pray today that you'll take the message and that you'll use it, our Father. May your name be honored. May Jesus be glorified. We thank you, dear God, for the deity of our precious Savior, who is very God and very man. Lord God, we thank you. He's very much alive today. And he still saves sinners. 
and thank you he'll be present father for his presence and he will be present with all of his dear people have you in this invitation dear lord speak in the radio listening audience may jesus be glorified i pray in his name amen now while debbie plays on the instrument if you're in this building and you're unsaved you want to get saved if you come down here will he help you to jesus if you're backslidden on God and you want to come back to the Lord, we'll help you back to the Lord. If you want to join this church and we receive members as a candidate for baptism, by letter or by statement, if you come, then we'll uh, accept you. Uh, and then if you're here for any other reason that you feel like you ought to come forward, if you'll come, we'll try to help you. Would you do it at this time while we wait just a moment? speaking to your heart anyone you have a good church home fundamental Bible believing church home if you like Northside would like to become part of our fellowship here we'd be glad to have you if you're saved love the Lord <laughs> 